is cool. Hello. Um, so I will present the deployment of IPv6 as we did at CERN. Uh, we'll, this is the agenda for the presentation. I will go very quickly because I think I don't have much time. So um, CERN, uh, CERN is a um, run a particle accelerator that is um, reside uh, 100 meter underground and is 27 kilometers long. Uh, we have a campus here uh, that is um, that hosts every day 10,000 people. So we have a large uh, network to, that uh, is used uh, for the campus for the desktop uh, Wi-Fi connection for the control of the accelerator. Uh, so we have a cryogenic system that keep it uh, at minus uh, a plus two degrees Kelvin. Um, it is controlled with an IP network, and we have a, a data center <laughs> in Geneva and one data center in uh, Budapest. We have 150,000, no, 150 routers, sorry, and uh, around more than 2,000 switches and 50,000 wired devices. So we manage uh, this uh, network with, with um, um, network management system that we developed and it takes all the information from a network database where all the devices are, uh, are registered with their MAC address and their IP address. So in, um, we started playing with IPv6 in 2001, but um, for many years we didn't really have nothing to do with it. So uh, the development uh, stayed in a corner of the network. Until uh, 2010, when the computer center people fell in love with the um, virtualization, so they started uh, creating virtual machines in large numbers, and they proved to be very useful. So it was soon planned to have um, a data center hosting 130,000 VMs, so everyone needing a public IP address, because uh, 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 we were going to upgrade our accelerator that is being upgraded now, it, and uh, it will generate more data than has done before. So the management approved the deployment project and allocated three people for this project for two years. One for the network part and two for the software development. The project was um, defined in this way, to be dual stack everywhere, um, to assign an IPv6 address to every IPv4, to every device that has uh, an IPv4 address. We wanted to have identical performance, so do not uh, use devices that were software uh, treating the packets. We wanted to use the same tools uh, that we were using for IPv4 and giving all the same services, network services. Um, I work for a group that called Communication System and takes care of the, all the fixed and Wi-Fi and telephony networks. And um, we run the DNS and DACP and NTP and radius. That's all the when I mean network service portfolio. This I mean these four services. So this was the board plan. So f testing. And then um, then one big job was to. Uh, designed a new schema for the network database that had to be compatible with, the, uh, with all the existing queries. Then we populated this network database. We developed the, what the plan was to develop the um, tools, uh, configure the network devices, and uh, then giving the tool to the engineers for the deployment and then finally to the end users. So how did it go? I think we went well. So the network database has been, uh, the schema has been completely changed and data ported to the new schema. And um, IPv6 has become the navigation um, uh, record. Before it was the IPv4 address, now it's the IPv6 uh, address. And uh, as the scheme is compatible with all the legacy queries, so we didn't have to change all the existing software we had before. So first we changed the database, and then we changed the software as it, um, with, with time. And we have uh, all the campus data center and firewalls and external router with all, all the interfaces dual stack. 
We haven't done it in the accelerator underground because there are a lot of uh, industrial devices that don't have IPv6, and there was uh, not a real need uh, to rush into this, in that one. And also the LEC detectors, they use old uh, technology that uh, were not ready to use IPv6 for the data acquisition. We assigned an IPv6 address to have IPv4 one. So since we use a database to generate the configuration of the DNS, every device uh, got a name uh, and an address, even if it was not used in uh, domain ipv6.send.ch. And also for, with, for the dynamic devices getting with, not, uh, with um, a, a, an IPv6 address that could change, we use the dynamic DNS. Uh, identical performance, this we did, uh, we did almost everywhere. The only exception is a, a point where we use a policy-based routing to, do, to allow some kind of traffic to bypass the firewall, uh, the firewall, stateful firewall. And this uh, is still uh, uh, software routed. And that, so we don't have that service at the moment. But it's not a problem because we don't have a, a large volume of traffic at the moment. Uh, the network management system, uh, we develop the, the software that configure all the routers for all the vendors we have. Uh, we generate the DACPv6 configuration and DNS from the network database, and also the firewall, uh, we generate the um, access list from rules that are in the network database. That's because most of the users, uh, even on the desktop, they have fixed IP address public, and they are allowed to run services that are uh, visible outside CERN for, because we work in collaboration with many universities so, and we have many guests, so users are allowed to install uh, any kind of service on their desktop or run even uh, small computer centers in their offices. Um, then we have this uh, do two inter web interfaces, yes, DB web, that is for the engineers and um, web rec for the users. I can give you a quick uh, screenshot. This is a uh, the interface for the engineers, and uh, this is a firewall. Oops. Well, we had uh, an example for the firewall. We have all the rules uh, IPv4 and IPv6. This is the um, end user interface where every the user can register their device. This is uh, the, the, their name, and then they get an IPv4 and IPv6 address, and they get the, the information of the name servers and uh, time servers that they can use. But anyway, they get this information via the ACP. Uh, we also implemented this IPv6 ready flag. You may have seen it here. Um, this allowed the, the end users to decide when uh, the DNS return the, the name .send.ch return both A and A uh, records. And that they do when all the services running on their machine are ready to reply over v6 and v4. Uh, DNS uh, is works over IPv6, uh, NTP, and DACP. Uh, DACP v6 was a um, bit of a challenge, and uh, also it was a, one of the um, thing that delayed us um, the most. We were supposed to finish by 2013. We have just finished. Um, and that's because we had to wait for classes that were available only at the very latest version of uh, um, DACP of ISC, the one we are using. Common security policies. The security team didn't want to ask uh, to deploy IPv6 if we were not blocking or filtering as it was for IPv4. So we had to implement uh, uh, the software, the firewall management software, uh, very soon before going for anywhere in production, and uh, so and we had to translate all the rules. We have 4,000 rules, more or less. So most of them were translated automatically, but some had needed uh, special care. And also we have a um, the software also manages anti-spoofing ACL everywhere where we connect the users. So these are statistics on uh, last week. We, uh, we saw 5,000 average JCPV6 leases. That is 55% of the leases we give uh, with the ACPV4. 
the DNS is uh, the IPv6 addresses are returned with the DACPv6 release. So we see 200,000 queries per hour, 4% of what we see on IPv4. And this is uh, internet traffic. It's around, uh, we see the peak of 60 megabit per second. That is 50% of our internet traffic. So again, as was said this morning, probably is a YouTube, um, not much more. And um, it's 5% of our generic traffic, but it's only 0 0.2% of all the traffic we send. We send out a lot of data coming from the accelerator, and this is uh, only from on IPv4. This is a timeline, detailed timeline. We can skip. There are more information at, the, at this web page. So challenges and lessons learned. Uh, benefits um, we see on on our group for is a very easy management of addresses. It's very easy to deploy new services. Um, there is nothing. To, all the services are. Uh, as the same size of the subnets. Before, we had to think every time we give a slash 27, a slash 98, a slash 29, and we change. And this, um, so with this a single size, there is no nothing to think. And also, it will stay forever. So there is no chance that it will change. And hopefully, is a future truth. The challenges we had to solve. So the size of routing tables. And uh, so the TIC I'm using the on the routers, this uh, is posed a challenge. Everything has doubled. We have uh, a lot of prefixes in our OSPF routing table, and also uh, this, uh, and so this uh, posed a challenge also in some routers that have uh, had a low, low TICA. Um, there were new issues to be solved by super lines, so we had to, for, to train the f uh, first line, second line, and third line, uh, all the support we have to be able to understand what it is IPv6 and uh, in order to relieve uh, the engineering. Um, DCP v6 is still an early stage. I will talk to you in the, more in the next slide. Uh, the security team had to learn uh, new things as well to, because uh, they realized quite soon that there were new threats coming in. And, and unfortunately, may, we have many applications that were written many, many years ago, and uh, it's very hardly that they will be uh, changed in order to use IPv6. About uh, the ACPv6, so we are not using um, auto configuration at all. Uh, and that's because we, uh, we use the, net, the addresses in the network database to generate the configuration for DNS, firewall, and also to trace the users, we map MAC addresses and, uh, and IP addresses so we uh, can understand what people are doing and help them in case of problem. And also we use as a light access control, so when a new user comes, it's forced to register the MAC address so we know who he is. So the drawbacks of that we have to have uh, router advertising anyway, for the full gateway and for the mast length. And um, especially the root, the full gateway is a problem because we cannot use it to, to decide which uh, gateway is used. This is the, made by the client. We were used to control the gateway that the clients were using. Um, we use the MAC addresses for to assign IP address, IPv4 addresses. And this is not uh, how DHCPv6 was supposed to work. We were supposed to use the uh, UID. Uh, but we cannot manage uh, the assignment of a UID because we don't manage the client. So um, we have put in place some tricks in order to get uh, the Mac correct MAC address. And also we are waiting for the implementation of this RFC that will uh, solve uh, this issue. And also, there are many devices that don't have a DCPv6 uh, client by default for so the iOS for up to version 6. Android, uh, even the latest one, don't have it. Uh, old Mac, uh, Lignos version, and all the industrial devices we are using. Um, 
we are working with uh, our user community to help them, uh, well, to uh, invite them to use IPv6. So we have a working group that is checking uh, all the application we have that we are using for the physics uh, analysis. And we have an international working group that, is, uh, that has made a list of all the application and is checking if they are compliant or not. So there is a lot of testing we are doing to help our users use IPv6. Uh, lesson learned. Uh, we deployed IPv4 for almost 20 years and it is taking time to catch up with all the expertise uh, developed during this time and also with all the software that we developed. The network is the easy part. So yeah, uh, when it comes to, for us a very long time uh, was, most of the time was spent in developing the software that manage all the addresses and, uh, and that generate all the configuration. When it came to push the configuration to the network, this was uh, done really fast. DHCP, DHCPv6 is not DHCPv4. When we started the project, we thought it was the same, but in fact, it was not. And uh, we learned it uh, the hard way. Uh, it helped a lot to have a staged deployment and um, to contact a large variety of users and also to keep in touch with them because we discovered that we were inviting users, they had problems and they didn't want to solve or don't even bother to tell us that uh, things were not working. So having a good relationship one-to-one -one with the users uh, or taking a group of users in a room and seeing how they can use IPv6 uh, or configure the IPv6 on their machines was very useful. Uh, we tested a lot, uh, we emulated all the lo load on um, our emu to understand if our routers would have been able to cope uh, with the additional load of SPF 3 and uh, all the routes uh, we were adding. And uh, I thought all the tests were okay, only when we put it on all the 150 routers we saw problems here and there. So, uh, yeah, the, the test on the live network is really important and will uh, show, uh, you have to be prepared that there will be a problem. Um, yeah. The developers, we, we all thought that uh, everyone would have been happy to implement IPv6 support, but uh, to use IPv6, but this is no, not what we are seeing. So the developers of production application, they are saying they already have too many bugs to solve. They don't want to add, to code the v6 support and add many more bugs. So then the last chance that I wrote after the yesterday, you no, know, two days ago was said, uh, what went wrong with IPv6? So I wanted to make a comparison with IPv4 as we did at CERN. So we started deploying IPv4 connectivity, giving IPv4 connectivity in 1986. And uh, the World Wide Web was conceived, the idea came in 1989 because uh, Tim Barnes-Lee had the pos possibility to use uh, terminals with IPv4. And three years later, it uh, came out and was uh, started using in the uh, scientific world. Uh, so this is already eight years after the deployment for IPv4. And um, at the time, 1992, the main protocol used at CERN was DECnet, and uh, it was uh, nobody thought it was going to disappear. And, but in fact, seven years uh, later, it uh, was phased out. And uh, Tim Berners-Lee was not a network engineer. He was a, a software developer. So I think it's not up to a network engineer or our community to find the application that will use IPv6. Yeah. More information at this website. Thank you. Any questions? You have. Uh, well, or grab, grab the other hand, help. Right. Uh, Kova, Google. A question, what are your plans for those taking your external services? Because we have uh, listened for interesting presentations about 
a, a mail servers, web servers being unavailable over V6, yeah, and so far as I can see, you, uh, your external services like mail server and web server are not all stack. Is there any particular issues which prevent you from doing that? Yes, uh, so the mail servers were moved to IPv6 internally, IMAP, uh, SMTP, uh, last week for all the internal users, but uh, they didn't want to open it for the external user because of the spam uh, software we are using that is not ready for IPv6. This is, was the reason. And for web services, we have a, um, uh, a system that uh, uh, allow users to create their own web services, uh, web ser servers. And um, again, it's only available inside. Uh, they didn't dare to do it with the um, main uh, www.sandosh website. We are. That's because of the, um, it, we went in production with the network uh, t two, three months ago. So we are. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So Shane, I'm not speaking as a chair. So. Um, one of the things you mentioned is that there's new issues for the support lines. Yes. And I remember way back in the day when we had the IPv6 World Day, it was a it was a concern that a lot of people had. They did a lot of training sessions and things for their for the help desk and didn't see any additional load. I guess I guess yes, you need the procedures, but have you have you actually seen additional questions because of v6 or anything like that? Uh, we saw questions. People wanted to know how to use it. Um, and, but no problems. In fact. Okay. So maybe people that did, were not, not able to um, get the DCP v6 reply. We saw the, for instance, for, for the Linux version we are using, Scientific Linux, there is a, a receipt to apply. For instance, IP table 6 was blocking the DCP v6 ah. uh, reply, for instance. And uh, so the, the, first, the ah. um, support line has to be trained to help them. Okay. And I do have an, another quick question, which is. Um, there, there are people trying to work on a secret plan to, to eliminate the need for RA, um, oh, the nice. ITF, to, to incorporate the functionality into DHCP v6. Very good. There are people who are very, very morally opposed to this idea in the IETF, um, but I hope ultimately pragmatism will, will, will win out in the end here. So. Nice, thank you. <laughs> that one over? Hello. Like Lionel Hoffman from Bull Telecom. Um, you, you talk about the um, exportation and the support tools and the management tools. Are they all homemade or are you using some standards, uh, you know, uh, uh, support tools? And did you encounter problems to move to uh, or to use them with IPv6? The first question. And the second question is about the applications. You, you seem to have a lot of uh, specific applications running over your system. And... Uh, are, um, are, 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 did you encounter, uh, uh, encounter problems to, to, to use this application on a dual stack you know, machine or um, still um, many applications are still in IPv4? What have you planned for these applications? Uh, that they will move to IPv6 or not? Okay, so... Um First question, most of uh, uh, the network management system is homemade, so we are using a commercial database, but the rest of the software that take out uh, the information is homemade, so no commercial uh, software. Um, second question, uh, uh, say again, sorry. So the second question concerns the applications Ah, yes. Uh, you talk about uh, the, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the application that don't move to IPv6 easily. So one, so yes, yes. Uh, one of the tests was to is to check if they keep working if they are on a dual stack machine, even if they don't use IPv6. Uh, because uh, we saw cases where they stopped working because they tried to use the ACPv6 rather than before. This is one of the tests, and. Um, uh, there are, we have a legacy application like AFS, is a distributed uh, file system that we think will never get IPv4 support. So we will have to see how to manage the machine that will need to access this. So if there will be servers visible outside, they will get public IPv4 addresses. So at the moment we are not in, the po uh, in a point where we can say uh, we will phase out IPv4 because uh, 
of the installed base of application. Also, we have tape servers. They are zero IPv6 support. Dual stack is a step, or do you plan to go in the future uh, to IPv6 only? And uh... Uh, at the moment, uh, we are dual stack forever. At that plan. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that wraps it up. Thank you. Yeah, and, thank you. and as a final note, I would like. <laughs> yes. And on a final note, we are running that IPv6 only service because if you are a developer and you are looking into adding IPv6, also be aware that you might encounter situations where IPv4 is no longer available.